Hi, I'm John Lind, the founder and chief editor of Healthcare IT Today, and we're excited to bring you this great interview. We have Alessandro Sabatelli. He's chief product officer and co-founder of Braid Health. Welcome, Alessandro. Thanks, John. Excited Thank to be you. here. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background and, and really, you know, before you got into healthcare. Sure. Um, uh, so let's see, I have a, I have a computer science background. Um, and have really been applying those skills towards uh, towards design and interaction design specifically for the past 20 years or so. Um, I spent about half of that at Apple where I had the, the real opportunity to lead interaction design for uh, some pretty broad reaching products. Um, uh, everything from Siri uh, to reminders, uh, leading animation for iOS 7, um, had the opportunity to work on the watch and have really been thinking about um, how humans not only interact with machines, but really interact with each other as mediated by machines. Um, and that's, and I, and I look to apply those skills in general to uh, large scale, scale problems. Nice. I mean, uh, this is really interesting because I think the number one comment I get on my blog is why can't Apple come into healthcare and improve healthcare? <laughs> so uh, it's fascinating that you're working to do that. And I think it's also interesting your co-founders from Twitter. So that's some pretty interesting background. And really, you know, coming out of those two companies, you guys could have done anything. I mean, you could have approached any problem you wanted. Why did you guys choose healthcare? Um, that, that's a really good question. I mean, I think um, we've both had the opportunity to work on uh, on large scale products that affect millions or billions of people. Um, and what we like to think is ideally um, have made a, a positive dent uh, in this universe. Um, but as we were working together and we've worked together for many years um, on and off, um, We've gone through our, our own stories uh, and our own interactions with the healthcare system. Um, I lost both my mother and my mother-in-law to cancer. And um, given the skills that we have, um, our ability to actually do something there um, really, really sort of drove us. Um, and I think part of it is also our own naivete. And we've been learning um, as we uh, <laughs> jumped into the into into healthcare sort of uh, head first. Um, but it's really been it's really been eye opening, and we just sort of had the questions as to you know why why is it like this or why can't it be another way, especially when you're when you're dealing with with time frames and and situations that feel so and that are so um, uh, so important and so um, critical. Uh, you really start to ask questions um, and the way that we both sort of think about things is in that critical way and we like to ask questions and so we dug and we dug and um as we were looking to do as we were looking to to see what we were going to do next um we started experimenting um with the application of uh, particularly around artificial intelligence um uh in in healthcare uh considering that uh, Kevin had built up uh, the the AI stack at Twitter, um, which was used to run everything from the timeline to revenue. Um, and I had really been starting to think more about um, proactive design and really thinking about design holistically. Um, and as we started to dig into, um, into the places that we could really apply our skills, we started to hone in on um, really uh, the delivery of of medical expertise, particularly around radiology. Nice. So we're going to dive into that a little. I, I think it's interesting that you are you admit some naivety with healthcare because I've always said that I think the way healthcare is going to be disrupted is by combining a few really technical, naive, but skilled people with a healthcare professional who understands the reimbursement models, the structural decision making. And if you combine those two together, you know, it's a, it's a powerful uh, construct to be able to do it. So, and I think I should change my question from now on when I talk to a new company entering healthcare, instead of saying, why did you choose healthcare? I should say, what's your story? Because it seems like that's the, what happens with almost every founder. So anyway, it's great that you're bringing uh, Braid Health to healthcare. 
there. So tell us, what is the big vision for Bright Health? You talked a little bit about AI and radiology. Is that the big vision? And what are you working on today? Well, I mean, it's really it's really focused around the, the delivery of medical expertise. Um, and that focus uh, is really hyper-focused on imaging um, and imaging diagnostics. Uh, it's what we experienced and um, as, as sort of being the roadblocks that we were running into in our own personal stories um, and ones which we thought uh, really um, could really benefit from the technologies in many, many ways that were already existing. Um, we didn't need to go out and spend years to do research in order to develop technology to address these problems. Um, from our vantage, we could see that the, many of the technologies were already existing um, and that the path was, um, you know, perhaps shorter than we had thought as we began to dug in, dig in. Um, and so what that means in practice is uh, that anybody anywhere in the world should be able to get um, uh, diagnostic imaging interpretation um, in seconds instead of you know days or hours, days, weeks, months, um, and there's no reason that that shouldn't be the case. And you know we're already we already see this in um, in radiology today, where you know the the radiologists are not evenly distributed. Um, of course, you know they want to live in city centers. Um, you know. I think systemically this has been fought by, you know, increased salaries in rural areas, um, but we don't necessarily think that that's, that's a sustainable solution, um, particularly, you know, as you get outside of the United States. Um, and I think fundamentally, uh, we're all people, and uh, I think this is sort of a basic human right. So is your solution going to read the radiology images using AI, or are you going to forward the image to a network of radiologists, or what, what's the approach? Yeah, that's that's a great question. I mean, I, we think about it holistically, um, and that those those design skills that I was talking about really have have taught me to think about these problems holistically. And so we think about them in terms of the people that are involved. So the providers, the patients, the specialists, and it's not about one of these things. It's about all of them in concert working together in order to solve the problem of, you know, delivering that diagnostic. So it's the diagnostic itself, um, and it's also getting that diagnostic to the person um, and, and connecting those. So it's actually both. Um, and we, we believe in many ways in what technology has been doing for uh, for millions of years, which is essentially um, allowing humans to work on things and expand their capabilities um, and removing much of the drudgery. Um, and that's really where we began. Um, uh, we really began focused purely on AI, and then we realized that it was also about the delivery of that, of that intelligence. Um, and we began to work there as well. And then we realized, you know, as we began this sort of march that um, it was also about, you know, securely delivering that information and building it in such a way that um, all of these things could come together in order to deliver that expertise where it was needed. Yeah, I mean, your timing's interesting since we just had the first FDA approved AI uh, reader of a, a radiology image. So uh, you're on the curve, it sounds like, to do either direction, which is a powerful idea. Now, do you sell to the radiologist or are you going direct to patient or, or how, how are you uh, going to market with that? Yeah, so um, we actually began um, in Southeast Asia and we began there. Um, by providing essentially overreads for radiologists. Um, and that, that was essentially customer driven, but providing that in a way that is, uh, is operating in real time, um, essentially to provide a safety net for doctors that are going through, in some cases, single doctors going through thousands of images a day, um, which, is, which is really intense, um, but they have, different, um, they have different conditions under which they work where the number of healthy patients is much higher. Um, and so um, we were able to essentially hone the system there in terms of the models um, and then being able to bring the technology here and begin to deploy it in a way where it's really focused on in a similar way um, where the expertise is needed the most. Um, we've been focused uh, almost exclusively uh, in the United States on urgent care where uh, the urgent cares 
uh, don't employ radiologists, um, mm -hmm. but they do have that need. Um, and so they've typically been served by uh, teleradiology, um, but uh, we think we can do a lot better. Um, and we've been proving that out. Uh, it's interesting to take it to the urgent cares. And do you see this? I mean, it sounds like you're already thinking internationally since that's how you started or or is the U.S. really the main focus or, you know, what, what's your approach international versus U.S.? Uh, I mean, we definitely think about it as a, as a global problem. Um, and there's some interesting advantages that we have by working um, on a global scale. Um, one of them being, for instance, uh, um, radiologists go home at night, um, but they're awake <laughs> somewhere else. Um, and that's really interesting when you start to think about like uh, the intelligence of the radiologist as augmented by a machine and then delivered on a global scale. Um, we, we have that advantage because we work, um, you know, across time zones. Um, so we definitely think about ourselves as a, as a global company. Um, of course, different places have different um, problems that need to be solved. Um, and they all uh, have their own cultural constraints as well. Um, but I think it's that, that diversity as well that makes, us, that makes us stronger and allows us to actually deliver um, better service wherever we are. So you've started with radiology, and it's interesting that you're working in urgent care centers in the U.S. Are you looking to expand it as part of that bigger vision of really, you know, helping medical expertise be spread? Or is this just the beginning, or do you think you'll be a radiology company? Um, those are all, I mean, those are all do you really... Do you consider yourself a radiology company? <laughs> um, you probably don't even consider yourself a radiology company, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, we, I mean, we generally are trying to solve the problem of the delivery. Um, and so, of course, like there are many um, types of, uh, or, or different forms of expertise out there. Uh, and there's many places that it needs to be. Um, so, I mean, maybe we think about more of ourselves as a healthcare delivery company. Um, mm -hmm. Radiology is really interesting because, um, um, I think at heart, we were also an imaging company. Um, that's where a lot of our expertise has, has, um, has come from. Um, and, and that's really interesting in and of itself because um, images, I mean, people are particularly drawn towards imaging. Um, you know, most of, our, most of our actual, like, you know, gray matter is, is devoted to um, processing imaging and like, you show somebody a picture of an x-ray and you point out uh, something on it, they can more easily understand than if you have them read, you know, um, a radiology report. And so even in that case, like we've been thinking a lot about like, well, how do we change the way that we report on imaging to, to patients so that they can actually understand? Because in many ways, it's the same problem is how do you get um, information from an expert to a non-expert in a way that they can understand and then have that non-expert be empowered by that information so that they can expertly convey that information to a patient who's arguably even less of an expert. Um, and so we think about it in that way and that, that sort of maps in many ways to, to some of the technology that we built um, around AI, which is essentially a mapping or a translation problem. How do we translate from the expert to the, to the patient? And do you have a learning in there that, you know, your experts that are doing the reads can inform your AI process to improve it over time? Or, or how, how are you approaching the learning around images? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, there's, there's a ton of data out there. I think, you know, the, the sort of data silos, um, particularly around the, the areas that were focused, started to fall about a year and a half ago or so. Um, so there is a ton of data out there. Um, it's not necessarily all very clean. Um, we employ radiologists as well that help us um, work through some of that data, um, as well as data that we get from our customers. Um, and we've built an active learning loop that allows us to then retrain on that data. Um, and the goal is always to get to the point where, you know, we're, trained, we're training in real time um, and learning in very uh, federated ways so that um, we can provide 
uh, the best service possible wherever that may be on a global scale based on the populations that are there. And we've also been able to see that with respect to, again, working in Southeast Asia versus the United States, um, really getting an understanding of what's different there between the two um, and where we can focus on them individually. Yeah, one big thing that's probably different is uh, how you pay for it, right? So what, what is your business model? Who's going to be paying for this? Is it the provider? Is it the patient? Is it the insurance company, employers? What, what's your approach there? Yeah, I mean, typically our approach has been focused on the providers um, or, or the actual um, the clinics that are that are providing the healthcare. Um, it's allowed us to move uh, more quickly um, and you know prove out our offering as we start to you know open our horizons with respect to you know who our actual customer may be in the future. Um, but those are the decision makers, um, and that's allowed us to move move pretty quickly. I think it's ironic you said that the providers were the way to move quickly <laughs> because I think every person that's sold to providers usually says it's such a slow process, but they do have some autonomy. So uh, if you have the right solution, I think they can move quickly. Sounds like what you've seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's once they see our offering, um, they understand, you know, not only does it allow them to um, provide a better patient experience, which allows them to, of course, like market and um, and reach out to the market um, more fluidly. Um, but, you know, they also see the impact on their margins and those the, that combination um, is uh, what we hope is pretty irresistible. Yeah, well, and I think especially in the urgent care market, there's been such a consolidation that's been happening that it's more and more corporations that are owning these or hospitals and health systems that are more business driven as opposed to onesie, twosie doctor practices that may be totally satisfied with what they have and they don't need much more. Mm -hmm. uh, is, have you seen that in your efforts or have you, you know, is it really the doctors pushing it forward or is it more the corporations that are growing up these networks of urgent care centers? Uh, there's a pretty broad spectrum. Um, I think, you know, a lot of hospital systems are, are building out urgent care as feeders into the systems themselves. Um, but sure. I think, I think fundamentally the, the patient still has their expectations. And when people, you know, have the opportunity to go online, and compare, you know, and review ratings, it's, uh, you know, um, on sites like Yelp, uh, you know, it becomes pretty clear who's providing the best service. Um, and I think, I think at the end of the day, the, the patients win, um, which I think is a really good thing. I don't think you can just, you know, slap urgent care on a building um, and, uh, and get by. I think you actually have to really compete um, at, that, at that patient experience level. Um, and again, like I think that's that's what everybody wants. Um, I think that's where the market is going. And again, I think it's really it's really good for for everybody. That's great. Well, yeah, I think it's great that you're coming and bringing an outside perspective to healthcare. Although I, I just have to ask you, like a lot of people have tried this. Uh, I often say that the reason that so many tech people come into healthcare is because once they become billionaires, they can't buy one thing which is extended life and so they start investing you know oracle did it the, you know even uh the former apple uh, ceo he, he's in healthcare you know and so it, you know, it's like okay the one thing you can't buy with billions of dollars is extended life so they try to invest in healthcare uh you know and, and no doubt they've tried and uh they've many of them some limited success but no real breakout successes so i guess i would just ask you you know what do you think uh, that you bring to the table to really solve the problems of healthcare when so many others haven't been able to do it so far um yeah i mean well first of all we surround ourselves with people um that do have that experience so that's that's i think that's like secret number one um Though, you know, you can make the same argument for many of the the other players, even the ones that you mentioned. Um, sure. I think, you know, we're, we're really, we're really passionate about it. Um, you know, like going back to that first question that you asked, um, like why healthcare? I mean, this is the thing that keeps us going, um, keeps us, you know, working uh, late nights, weekends, whatever, um, whatever it takes, um, because we see the, we see the real impact. And for us, um, you know, having seen that impact 
uh, and in the work that we've done before, but actually being able to see it in a way that viscerally affects people, you know, where they are today, um, as opposed to where we can where we can take them is is incredibly powerful. Um, and I think you know at the same time um, we've been able to touch so many things um, uh, that we believe that our experience. Um, through these through these different technologies, um, and many of which, again, like I said, exist already today, um, I think uniquely position us to deliver um, a solution that that actually makes a difference. And you know that goes back to the question that you that you asked also with respect to like where our focus was, um, and that's why like you know it's been it's been more work and and, and a bit of a of a um, uh, larger effort, um, but we realized early on that we had to do many things and not just one small thing. Developing an AI algorithm that looks at chest x-rays and attempts to diagnose particular conditions is not a solution. Um, mm -hmm. It's really about, um, you know, that. It's about empowering the, the radiologists so that, you know, essentially allowing them to move the field forward um, more quickly, um, being able to essentially extend their abilities so that, um, and, and like humans in general, their expertise so that, you know, they can service more people with more accuracy and do it in a way where, you know, they're not burning out and they're not spending all of their time, um, you know, whether it's filling out reports or coding or whatever, um, but really actually being able to um, push the boundaries of healthcare and, and deliver that at scale. Um, so that's, you know, us taking our skills and applying it to what we see as the problem at large. I think it's a beautiful description of uh, of what we really need in, in healthcare, right? It, it's not even, a lot of people talk about replacing the radiologists, and to me it's exactly what you described, which is how do we enhance what they're doing and enable them to be more productive and more accurate. But I love also that it sounds like you guys have a connection to the patient as well and pushing the results to the patient and doing it in a way that they understand, which provides that full spectrum, which I think is what you talked about. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's also, you know, it's not just crushing the time to getting an accurate diagnosis. It's about like presenting it in a way where the patient can actually understand and really, you know, empowering them so that, you know, they can agree to a, a plan of care and stick with it um, and have it be stable, one that's not going to change ideally unless, you know, the conditions are changing. I think those are really important because at the end of the day, like in many of these cases, um, the patient needs to do the patient needs to actually and we've all been there the patient needs to be the one that drives that healthcare nice so you know let's uh, let's look at your experience at apple uh, and you know certainly this could be things you're applying at braid health or maybe stuff that other people in healthcare could apply where there's certain things you learned at apple some lessons some mantras some uh, experiences you had or or approaches that they took to design, you know, that, that really apply to healthcare, you know, whether it's at Braid Health and everything you're doing in your company or just in healthcare in general, are there things we should do? Uh, you know, we often, you know, discuss the iterate, you know, release early and off and kind of a startup principle, right? And how does that apply to healthcare? And can you do that in healthcare? Can you not, right? Uh, it, which I think is a valuable discussion to have in, in you know, things like that are important in pushing healthcare forward. Is there any principles or things, that, you know, approaches that you learned from Apple that could really benefit healthcare and maybe you use it Braid Health? Um, well, we definitely tend to think about things holistically. Um, we try to really understand, um, you know, what, what the issues are as opposed to necessarily what people are asking for or what they think the solutions would be. Um, we certainly take that, you know, under advisement, but we we definitely try to think about it holistically. Um, and in the development of whatever technology or software that we're creating or whatever experience, um, we certainly know that, uh, you know, in healthcare, you can't just like fail off and break things. Um, you know, people's lives are, are at stake and um, the people around them as well. I think there's a balance there. Uh, you know, we want to move quickly um and not necessarily get bogged down i mean i think the general mantra is do no harm um or some form of ahimsa but uh i think um it's a balance 
and uh, you know we're always we're always looking for that balance. But being balanced, you know, is uh, is something that constantly requires um, effort. Um, yeah, and I think I think in general, um, you know, we've seen throughout our careers that like uh, what we there's things that we like. Uh, we like small teams that um, are hyper efficient. Um, we don't have to deal with a lot of overhead. Um, we like working with the best people in the world, um, and those are the people that we surround ourselves with. Um, and people like us that are that are really driven, motivated, and passionate, um, really about seeking the truth um, and uh, you know trying to make um, as much of an impact as we can in a positive way. Um, and so, you know, for us, that mission is really important. Um, and I think, you know, that empathy um, towards that mission is 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 uh, equally important in the people that we work with. Excellent. Well, thanks for taking time to share about Braid Health. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how the company evolves and uh, see what you guys are able to do. And I love that you're bringing some of the uh, tech uh, design and and I love the holistic approach. Uh, it's certainly needed in healthcare. So thanks everyone for watching and thanks to our guest, Alessandro Sabatelli, he's chief product officer and co-founder of Braid Health. If you wanna find more great content like this, check it out at healthcareittoday.com. Thanks Alessandro. Thank you, thanks for the opportunity.